What's going on fam? It's your boy Sydney from the NakedGardeners.com. Today's video, we're going to be talking about how to get prepared for the new growing season for 2024. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of first time growers out there. So this uh, video is going to be for you if you're looking to get into gardening for your first time and don't know where to go. What we're going to be talking about is what plants you should start off for a beginner gardener, what their advantages and disadvantages of growing these uh, items, and uh, when you should start them. It's not going to show you exactly how to do these things. That, that will be into a later video. We'll do a kind of tutorial uh, setup the, from how to make your own growing uh, medium to starting your seeds how to transplant them and things of that nature so without further ado let's get growing for those that don't know we are the naked gardeners we started out in a small urban backyard garden near the dallas area of roughly about 600 square foot of growing um, space we started off in container gardeners then worked out our way up into raised beds and then eventually uh, growing so much we outgrew our area that we were in so we decided to come here about almost three years ago this may april this is a six and a half acre where we're able to grow a lot more uh, than what we were at our homestead urban area out in the dallas region so uh we took it slow and that's what i suggest new gardeners to do is start off very small because you might see a lot of these youtube channels that grow in a lot of things uh, but you don't know the quite setup of how to take care of them. So I would suggest going like in a four by four container gardener type ordeals if you could. In this video, we're gonna kind of go over uh, a few items that are very easy to grow for a first time gardener. For instance, uh, tomatoes. Everybody loves tomatoes. Now there's two different varieties of tomatoes that are common to a lot of the growers. You have your indeterminate tomatoes, which could grow anywhere from 12 to 18 feet or even uh, larger than that. So if you're in a small space, I wouldn't suggest growing those, especially we just found out last year um, that with these, they don't do very well in the Texas climate that where we're at. Uh, we are in the Northeast Texas where it gets very hot during the summer. So a lot of the tomatoes of the indeterminate will kind of start, uh, stop putting off their flowers once the temperature reach around 95 degrees or higher. So, but however, if you have the space, I would suggest going with the indeterminate variety. If you're in a, don't have that large of a space, I would suggest going with a determinate variety. Now with a determinate variety, they are a short um, set amount of fruit. They will grow anywhere from uh, two feet up to about five to six feet. Uh, they will produce all their fruits all at once. Well, not all at once. They have a set amount of fruit that they will produce. And once they're done, they're done and they will die off. So you will have to learn how to do succession planting. Something that we haven't uh, kind of got down at the right moment just yet. However, we grow enough for the determinate varieties that it lasts us throughout the whole summer. There's a pros and cons to each one. Uh, with the indeterminate variety, and like I said, they grow uh, for, you know, they just continue to grow. The only thing that will kill them off is either disease or the frost. They will have a endless amount of uh, fruit that you can harvest off of from them. However, one of the things that uh, you will find with growing with the indeterminate is you're going to have to prune them a lot because you will want some airflow to go through those uh, veins to allow them not to cause any diseases. So, you know, those are some of the things that you're going to have to deal with the indeterminate variety. Now with the determinate variety, they're perfect for container gardeners or if you have small spaces. Uh, the bad thing about these is once they are done with their uh, fruit, then they will basically just die off. You don't have to prune them. Uh, they're not uh, susceptible with diseases as much as with the indeterminate variety, at least in our case. With tomatoes, you want to start those about six to eight weeks before your last frost. Now, if you don't know your last frost, you can go to the farmersalmanac.com, type in your zip code, and they will um, 
put out your average last frost within the last 10 years. Now I know that the USDA, they just redid some zonings and stuff like that. So I would just kind of go off of what the farmersalmanac.com uh, suggests for your last frost. Backdate that to about six to eight weeks and then uh, start your seeds from there. Another member of the nightshade family are the peppers. Now there's two different varieties of peppers. They are the sweet and mild peppers and then you also have your hot peppers. Both are great for culinary uses and you can definitely use these if you have a small or limited spaces. Now with the sweet peppers, um, you have different uses with the culinary uh, uses of the sweet peppers. It adds different colors because uh, they have different variety of colors. They have different uh, savory and mild flavors to your dishes. The thing that will be a bad point uh, with the sweet peppers and not really a bad point is it doesn't have a lot of heat and with preserving them, uh, you're gonna have to blanch them and freeze them. That's the, to keep them as a, what they call a shelf uh, shelf life, is it's just to freeze them. Uh, and then when you uh, repurpose them, I, for me, I just don't like the texture of them unless you're gonna use it into some type of soups for stir fries. It's eh, hit and miss, depending on how you use it. Unless you probably have a freeze dryer, but if you're starting off with gardening, you probably won't have that right now. So that leads me to the next one is hot pepper. Now we love growing hot peppers uh, for the simple fact. The hot peppers are very versatile for our case. We love spicy food. The good thing I love with the hot peppers is you can store them dried, unlike what you can do with the sweet peppers. Now with the hot peppers, you can uh, dehydrate them or just let them air out dry. And then when you're trying to repurpose them, all you got to do is add some liquid to them and they will kind of reconstitute themselves to being as a formidable uh, item to use in the culinary use. With the peppers, you want to start these anywhere from six to eight weeks before your last frost date. Like I said, they're also great for container gardens if you don't have that much space or you could do in-ground or raised bed. Now, one of the cons about growing hot peppers is that not everybody in your family might like hot food. So you gotta be mindful of that when you're incorporating this into one of your dishes. And then if you're gonna be using this in one of your dishes, you gotta make sure you're wearing gloves because if you get on your hot uh, eyes, on your face or something like that, it could irritate that, uh, your face. Or if you happen to go to use the bathroom, you might forget about it and then, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. So be mindful of that. So those are a list off of our nightshade family. A lot of people might say, well, now what about okra? Or what about eggplant? Now, the, me and the Mrs. Necker Gardener, we're empty nesters, uh, so it doesn't behoove us to grow a lot of eggplant uh, because only so many dishes that you can use, like eggplant uh, parmesan or ratatouille, things of that nature. So, I mean, we tried different eggplants and we just like, do we really need to grow this many plants of eggplants, a different variety? So this is the reason why I said these are simple things for a first time gardener that you're going to be growing for your first time in 2024. Okra is hit and miss. Some people don't like okra. There's different varieties of okra, so you have to be careful with that. We try different varieties. Some are good uh, raw, just eating raw off the off of the uh, vine. Some are good to be pickled. Some are good to be fried just by the texture of the wall and their thickness of the wall. So I wouldn't try that off the jump on your first time gardening for this year because one, depending on how many people in your family, you're going to have to grow anywhere from like four to six plants per, I would suggest four to six plants per person. And you have to be mindful on the okra because they grow like weeds. You might see them this time like this in the morning and then by the evening they're that thick and then they're not edible to eat. So I would suggest doing okra till you get these basics down right. And which leads me now to the leafy green. Leafy greens is probably one of the easiest plants and vegetables to grow. Uh, you can start these anywhere from three to four weeks before your last frost and you can do succession planting with these uh, like every three to four weeks. And let me show you our leafy greens that we're growing right now. Here is our salad bed mix. Uh, right here we have our arugula. Uh, 
I know uh, Broke, he's not a big fan of arugula. If you like peppery uh, things, arugula would be uh, a great taste for you. Arugula, mustards, and radishes, uh, which we'll get into later. Those are gonna be great if you like peppery items. Um, I like them in salad, but I don't like them too much into my salads. So I normally would have a lot of these salad mixes that we're gonna show you here now. And then I would put like for, uh, for every five ounces, maybe half an ounce of arugula into our salad mixes. So that way it's not overbearing, but it has a nice little kick to it. That's what a lot of people miss, make a mistake with arugula. Here we have different salad mixes. Uh, I've got from Johnny Seeds. These are the main ones that we are growing. Uh, I forgot that I think this is mirror and this is Salva Nova. I could be wrong I put it up on the screen, but I like these these hold very well with your having salad dressing They're very firm. So if you love a good salad, uh, I will put a link into that um, We also have uh, some brassicas like this uh, broccoli right here I wouldn't suggest growing broccoli for a first-time grower broccoli cauliflower uh, and cabbage, kohlrabi, those fall into the brassica uh, family and they take a long time uh, to uh, form their head and get the uh, great size of harvest that you need. So most time with first time gardeners, they don't have a lot of patience. So I would not suggest these. Sometimes they take anywhere from 75 days up to 110 days to before you can harvest them. So if you have a very small space, especially if you have a very small space or you're just using them in containers, I would suggest not growing these until you get your system down packed on how you're gonna be growing a lot of your other vegetables. We also have some spinach here and different varieties of spinach. Uh, we also have mazula and some red mustard giant or giant red mustard, I forgot what they're called. Uh, but these and Mrs. Love, uh, once again, they are very peppery. Uh, so if you don't like those, we she mostly use these in types of soups. Next is gonna be off your brassica list. I would suggest going with your collards, uh, your collard greens, your mustard greens, your turnip greens, uh, your Swiss chard, which is not really in your brassica, but there are a leafy green. And the good thing about a lot of these leafy greens is they're fast growth. Uh, so you can get a good harvest off of them from anywhere from four to six weeks after transplanting them. With the leafy greens that I just mentioned, they're great for containers. If you have a small space, they have a great growth once the temperatures are ideal for them. Uh, now they do bolt or go to flower which will change the taste uh, with these if it gets too hot and it goes to flower so you got to be mindful of that they do require some watering which is why during the winter or fall seasons they're perfect because you don't have to water as much because you don't have to worry about the evaporation or the heat drying out your soil so now we're going to move on to herbs now you could grow just about any herbs uh, but I would suggest before you uh, before you start herbs, which should be anywhere from six to eight weeks, is start looking about when if you're cooking different items and dishes, what seasonings that you're using, and maybe you can start growing those. Uh, some of the herbs that uh, you can grow are like oregano, peppermint, uh, sage, rosemary, lavender, chives. Uh, different things of that nature. Now with basil, something that we learned in our first year, it, basil loves the heat. And so you want to try to grow those in the spring to summer times. Once the temperature gets around 75 degrees, the basil will thrive on that. Uh, opposite is with the cilantro and the parsley. They're more of a, of a cold hardy uh, plant uh, type of herbs. All of these herbs are great for containers. And with peppermint, you definitely want to use it in a container because they are very invasive if you're going to go with in-ground or a uh, raised bed. So you got to be mindful of that. Uh, there's lots of uses that you can use with uh, these herbs. You can let them dry and use them uh, naturally into your culinary dishes, which is excellent. We do that a lot. Uh, 
it's just so amazing when you could do like a cook a chicken or beef or whatever type of dish you're having and it calls for rosemary or thyme or something like that you can just go to your garden get some fresh and it just takes and enhance that flavor of that dish so uh, definitely go with uh, some herbs find out what you would like and then uh, put them in containers like I said they're great for containers if you don't have a lot of space the good thing about with cooking or growing a lot of these herbs is some of them can be even medicinal like a peppermint is a great for medicinal uses oregano rosemary now the good thing about growing these herbs is not only they're great in the culinary uh, mindset but they're also great if you're going to be doing them for medicinal uses a lot of these herbs have different medicinal uses from peppermint to oregano to rosemary uh, so you want to kind of take those into effect and some of them can even be transferred over into using as teas um, like peppermint like i said basil certain basil is great for teas uh, sage you can use that as a different type of tea chamomile uh, and there's a lot of uh, purposes that you can use now with these herbs they're great for containers so like I said if you don't have a lot of space you can use that and uh, they really don't require a lot of maintenance uh, for them. once you plant them and they get established there a lot of these herbs besides the basil the parsley and the cilantro are perennials which means once you plant them one time they will continue to grow uh, from there some of the disadvantages of on growing some of these is very little uh, like I said you got to be mindful of the weather because basil doesn't like the cold the cold will die those off uh, mint uh, different plants of the mint varieties and the family they will become quite invasive if you're not growing them in containers but other than that they're very hardy and some of them are very drought tolerant which means you don't have to water them as much so definitely consider growing some of your herbs if you're going to be a first-time gardener we're going to jump into the squash variety family uh, that falls into your squashes your cukes your melons your cucumbers they to me they all fall in that family and the good thing about these they're very nutrient dense and then they're very prolific once they're setting off their fruit uh, so you got to be mindful of that the bad thing about these is they're going to require a lot of space uh, some of them have very short uh, shelf life unless you're growing a winter squash variety uh, so you got to be mindful of that now with pests they love squashes so you got to be mindful of that also I've, actually they love all of these varieties of vegetables uh, but they mainly you have to worry about with your squashes we tried to plant our squashes after doing this now for quite some time we tried to plant our squashes around after july time frame or start another wave of uh, squashes around july august time frame because a lot of the squash vine borers and the squash bugs they're pretty much died off by that time uh, so we're trying to do that now we're just basically starting another wave around july august time frame but cucumbers once you get your cucumbers uh, off going and your watermelons I mean they are very prolific they're sitting off fruits like for days I mean it got to a point where we were having too many cucumbers and melons one year where we just had melons galore luckily we have chickens uh, so we were giving that to the chickens and it's very good for them to have especially around these extreme summer heat of this Texas weather that we have uh, because it helps them hydrate so it's good to uh, grow that for us especially if you have animals like that or pigs let's go talk about root crops uh, there's different types of root crop I would suggest growing the only bad thing but with some of the root crops is uh, if you don't have the space for them I wouldn't suggest growing them unless you have a large grow bag uh, for instance like potatoes those require a lot uh, we've grown a pretty on the first two years of uh, growing potatoes uh, we didn't do quite too well but we did get a nice harvest from them uh, with sweet potatoes that was another variety that we love growing with the sweet potatoes you have to grow them from the slips um, and with the slips you want to start those anywhere from six to eight weeks prior to the last frost those are the main two ones I would suggest growing 
um, with carrots is part of the root family and also radishes which is kind of also with the brassicas uh, rutabagas and turnips I wouldn't grow those as a first-time gardener I would just stick with the basics if you're gonna do root type vegetables with the root vegetables they store very well you have uh, endless options that you can use with uh, potatoes and sweet potatoes from uh, cubing them up and roasting them stir fry mashing them I mean the it's a lot of options that you can uh, use from there there's also sunchokes I wouldn't suggest sunchokes because they're very high in fiber and when you're eating them as a mashed potato they will give you gas now there's certain ways you can decrease the chemical in the sunchokes by fermenting them uh, to decrease the chances of you getting gas but that's a whole nother uh, video off of, off on of its own so just I will stick with the potatoes and the sweet potatoes if this is your first time garden, gardening they're great with uh, high in fiber uh, high in density nutrients with vitamins minerals and they store very long for the advantages the disadvantage of growing these it takes a while to get your harvest from them so from a first-time gardener you're definitely going to have to have patience uh, they do require a lot of space because they spread out especially sweet potatoes and um, sometimes they get uh, we haven't had the issues but we've known some other uh, folks that had uh, the beetles uh, attacking their sweet potatoes and the potatoes so you got to be mindful of that one last thing about the root crops is the soil the soil is the big thing of uh, growing any type of root crop uh, you want to have a well drained soil you want them to have your soil very nourished I, we normally do a lot of compost and a lot of organic matter when we're growing any type of uh, root vegetable and you want the soil to very be very very soft and be able to penetrate especially if you're going to grow carrots which like I said I wouldn't suggest growing carrots or radishes unless you eat radish uh, but carrots and radish are very tricky uh, even some of the skilled uh, gardeners have an issue growing those sometimes a lot of these you're going to have to uh, direct sow uh, once the soil has reached around 55 to 65 degrees and the soil is uh, able to be workable a lot of people do a lot of tilling uh, with these root crop vegetables but all we do is normally just continue to add compost or organic matter on top of the uh, bed that we're growing on and be able to plant them that way bringing some daylight out here getting dark can't wait we got a few more days before yeah, it starts staying lighter a little bit longer now I've been covering a lot of uh, vegetables for what I suggest a first-time gardener should be growing if you're watching this and you're experienced gardeners and you feel I left out anything please comment down below and let our viewers know now before we get into the next uh, type of vegetable to grow I just want to kind of give an announcement some of y'all probably already noticed that on Instagram I started another account called farmer Sid uh, that way we could kind of uh, stay with the naked gardeners on the growing side and learning how to garden and with the farmer said uh, account it's going to be more towards the homestead farming aspect and we're going to be doing a little bit of business how to do this as a business mindset uh, kind of give you uh, ideas and events to what is out there if somebody's looking to become a homesteader or go from the urban gardening out into the homesteader where you're raising your own food that's the channel that's going to be for you we're going to start gearing that channel uh, basically as a niche for that homesteading the farmer type business so without further ado let's get to the next type of vegetable and that is going to be the legumes now there's you have your beans and your uh, your peas some are bush varieties some are pole varieties you have uh, green beans uh, runner beans uh, there's uh, black eyed peas different types of things that you could grow uh, for in your garden and they do require a trellising unless you do the bush varieties so if you don't have this space make sure you look on the seed package and look for a bush variety 
uh, or sometimes they might even say container variety. Now these are some great vegetables to grow. I love them. Uh, one of the advantages of growing these is because they take the nitrogen out of the air and transform them into the soil. And uh, once they're done and died off, that's, that nitrogen stays into the soil. So when you put another plant in there, it's less fertilizers that you have to do uh, with that particular plant that you replaced it with. Uh, we, are, we didn't do a lot of green beans or beans and peas last year, but we will be doing that a lot this year. Uh, especially off the trellis that I just showed you on. Uh, they will be a lot of those in there because we want to kind of be self-sustaining and uh, some of those we're gonna leave some of those beans and peas on the pods and uh, harvest those for next the following years the uh, growing season now a lot of people say that you don't want to start these indoors you want to direct sow them uh, because they lessen the chance of you getting a transplant shock uh, so you got to be mindful of that. They're great for culinary uses. You can do them as stir fries. Some of them, like sugar snap peas and sugar daddies, you can eat right off the vine. They're great snack uh, to be used right out the garden. They have multiple purposes uh, with them. And like I said, you can uh, let them dry on the bean itself, on the vine itself, and uh, harvest those seeds and use those seeds as the following year. One of the disadvantages of growing legumes is their uh, weather tolerance. So with beans, they love the heat, uh, but don't like the cold. With peas, they love the cold, but don't like the heat. So you got to be mindful of uh, when you're going to be planting these. Uh, you want to start these seeds for beans uh, once the soil is workable anywhere in the soil temperature reaches above uh, 55 to 65 degrees with peas we normally start our peas during the, around the august september time frame we have a long growing season i believe our growing season anywhere from 265 to 285 days out of the year so that's not bad so we normally grow those as a uh, a fall winter harvest for us but like I said they have endless countless uh, possibilities that you could use as a culinary issue so if you have any questions or want to share some of your experience or want to, us to do something on a future video make sure you drop a comment down below uh, that kind of helps out this community and push the algorithm for YouTube uh, we got to get this back going up we are going to be doing some uh, videos about how to start each one of these particular uh, vegetables so if you're new to the channel want to see how we do that make sure you follow along if you like this video make sure you give us a thumbs up until the next video let's grow together